really glad that you're here. Uh, this is about traveling well less. And I have been doing this for probably a long time, but definitely in the last four years since I started traveling full time. But I think house sitting and pet sitting is an amazing way to really travel well for less, whether it's for a weekend or a week or you want to a month for a setup. There are all sorts of options, and I get a lot of questions, concerns, and worries, and how do you get started? So this is one of a four-part series on how to get started house-sitting. And today, we're going to talk specifically about where do you find house-sits, and how do you get started in setting up your profile? So I'm really glad you're here, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's joined us. So I'm wondering, put in the, in the chat, you have been house-sitting, you've done pet-sitting, you want to, or you're like, mm, not sure that's for me. So put it in the chat and we'll we'll have a little conversation about it. I don't know about you, but I do not have millions in the bank that supports my need to travel. And so I don't live with regrets. I can't retire with more money now. I can't have saved more money. Um, I work. Yes, I probably could, but I've chosen to. So I am trying to make my um, social security and my retirement funds go as far as possible. And house sitting definitely allows me to do that. So if I'm doing it, I know you can too. So I'm glad you're here to find out about it. Um, so why house sitting? One, one of the most expensive things when you travel is accommodations, hotels, Airbnbs. I know some people stay in hostels. I'll be honest with you. Some of the hostels are lovely. Some of them are not. I did that early in my travel career and I have just chosen not to. So the house and the pet sitting is my route to seeing my own accommodations. And it really works really well for me. And I stay in some amazing houses I'll tell you about later. So one of the things that I tell people about house sitting and pet sitting, 99% of them will come with pets. And they can come from the typical domesticated cat and dog to farm animals and snakes and fish. And you'll find, I'll show you how to, to look at that part too. But you can, you can filter out if you only want to sit for cats or you only want to sit for dogs or you love being in a rural environment with farm animals and chickens. So you can find your niche in this house and pet sitting land. So I want to set that aside. Um, there are house sits that don't have animals. And I've done a couple of those for a long time where a owner of a home has gone away for um, eight weeks and they don't want to leave the place empty. We've all heard the disasters about hot water heaters boiling over and, you know, or uh, irrigation systems flooding. So they want somebody to keep an eye on the house and depending on where they live, they want somebody coming and going on a regular basis. So those are always lovely to see. And I finally find that usually find those through referrals, not on a house sitting platform, which I'll talk to talk about in the middle in a minute. So the deal with the house and the pet sitting two ways. I think that you should think about this. You decide where you want to go and look for a house sit in the area or you find a house sit and then you decide that's where you're going on vacation or to live for a couple months or whatever you're going to do. So there are two ways to use the house sitting, either to help you plan where you're going or to be adventurous and decide that you want to try someplace new. So we're going to talk um, today about where you find the house sits and setting up your profile because that can take two to four weeks. So that's the starting point. This is a four-part series, as I mentioned. So you're going to, um, let me just show you uh, what's coming up. So, uh, sorry, let me get this, hold on. Sorry, it's a new, a new system that I have. So let me just give me a second to get there. Um, here we go. Okay, so this is a four-part system, a four-part course that I'm doing, and this is Let's Get It Started. Um, on October 6th, we're going to talk about how to find the best house sits, how to filter and look and review and interview and apply. And then in part three, we'll talk about preparing yourself for the house sit and questions to ask and make sure there are some details that you get. And then during and after the house sit to make sure that you're asked back if you really liked it. So that's one of, this is one of four. So we're going to go through that today. Um, so uh, if you are looking to house sit, one of the things that we have are many, many online platforms because we're living in 2024, right? And so you can find everything online. So one of the biggest, there are a number of them that you can use. Um, let me just share this real quick. Hold on. Let me just share this screen. Um, 
Here we go. There we go. Okay. So all of these trusted house sitters is probably, if you're familiar, one that you have heard about, THS, trusted house sitters, one of the biggest. It's based in the UK. I just find that some gaps. It doesn't always cover the entire world. Um, trusted Trust My Pet Sitter is new, also based in the UK, but they're like a matching service, a concierge service. So you put your name in, they've interviewed. It's a, a, a stronger verification and interview process because there's no database for me to look through. They find sits and then call me and say, we think this is something you would like to do. And they liked your profile. So it's sort of like a matching service. They have called me a number of times um, and I've already been booked. So I'm anxious to, to do some with them when I have some time. House carers, Aussie and Kiwi house sitters. So then there are country-based house sitting services as well. So you can use whatever you want. And I sort of went to the Aussie and the New Zealand. For those of you who know me, I, I like to spend time there. And I wasn't finding a lot of sits. I, I found a couple, but I wanted to find more. And in all of these, you can set up notifications. So you can decide, I want to go to Paris for Christmas. And you put in the dates dogs and cats want, and then um, it'll send you notifications. So you don't have to keep going to the app over and over and again, looking for it. We'll talk about that in part two though. And then mind my home and mind my house also have sort of mind my home, Australia, mind my home, you know, whatever. So, and then no Mador. And you see, they all have a cost. Um, I would say the trusted house is probably the highest, but for me, these little ones that don't cost that much are worth having in my back pocket um, if I'm having a challenge. So, Trusted House Sitters is one of um, is one of the big ones that we use, and you need to set up. You need to join. You can go to Trusted House Sitters now, and you can look around, but you won't be able to um, book anything. Oh, hold on, sorry. Let me share this one. You won't be able to book anything. You won't be able to um, search very strongly. So you have to join these things in order to use them. So this is my profile, Trusted House Sitters. So what we're going to talk about today is how you set that up. So this is sort of the beginning of Trusted House Sitters. And then this is Kiwi House Sitters. And you can, um, so the people showing, sorry, I have to keep, this is a new thing. So you'll have to excuse me because I keep, um, it's a new streaming service that I'm using. So I have to I'm sort of learning it. Sorry about that. So Kiwi house sitters only in New Zealand, which is really helpful. I mean, if you want to spend a month or two in New Zealand and like I'm here in San Diego and I've been here since June and I booked myself from June all the way till November. So you could, I find this really useful because they're focusing on New Zealand and you might find trusted house sitters a little bit light, sort of the farther you go away from the United States, UK and Europe. Um, so that's, another one that you can you can look at and then um, there's australia mind my home which is another one and again you know you're you're basically buying to get in and then you have the searchability and the um ability to set up your your profile so let me just go back to the file for a second um this this can take some time so you need to sort of set aside some time. So if you want to go away next week, that's not going to work. Okay. <laughs> I would say that setting up a house sitting schedule, I start in February when I know that I'm going to come back to a place, whether it's the United States or go back to Australia or I want to go to Europe or Canada. So I start setting up um, searches and interviews and sending in applications around, around then. So as you can see, it's got a picture in it and you've added You've added pictures to it, you know, so they get to know you. The thing about the online platforms is that your email gets verified. So does the host email. Your phone is verified. Your ID is verified. You have to have external references. So even if you haven't house sat before, it's sort of a character reference. And so all of this takes time. And so and there's a criminal background check. So that's why I said you can't do this like tomorrow. You start the process now so that you could be ready by Christmas to start house sitting if you wanted to in a nice warm place if you want. So there's an advantage to using these online platforms and it kind of talks, you know, you, you write all of this. So you're selling yourself. One of the hot tips on this one is short and sweet and to the point. So think of yourself as a host looking for somebody to house it and you have eight applications and you have to read through all of these. You want to read through 
all of the reviews I've had, right? People sent reviews in for me. You want to see what I've said. Um, you want to see the animal, what I've taken care of cats and dogs and cows and chickens. So for every applicant they get, a homeowner or a host is really going to look very care carefully because you are going to be staying in their most expensive asset, their home, taking care of their furry family. So this is no joke. So, But you want to keep it short and sweet and lively so that when these hosts are reviewing your application and your profile, they get what they need quickly, snappy, you know, and they get a sense, oh, that's good. Now, I would say that some of us here might be over 50 or 55. If you're if you're over 55, just say yes or something. Um, I have heard the horror stories of hosts who have young millennials work from home people who have decided to house sit and travel while they work. And when the host or homeowner got home, the place was a mess. This young person didn't understand to follow the directions, walking a dog, cleaning cat litter, making sure food didn't stay out, you know, or dishes didn't stay out. We have an advantage. So you could have an amazing profile. You could have an absolutely amazing profile. And, and it, it, your age will put you at the top of the list because they're like, oh, somebody who has some responsibility, who may have had a home at some point in time or a condo they're taking care of, maybe they've even had pets. So in this day and age where this work home, the digital are out there living in a different lifestyle than we did when we worked, um, it's it's created some challenges for the hosts and the homeowners and they, they share with me all of their disaster stories. So they know when they get me or they get you, they're getting somebody who's responsible and knows what they're talking about. So your profile is important, but your age here and your experience is highly valued. So it's a little easier than you may think it, it is. So, um, so that, and this is why a lot of people are using the online platforms where they verify everything so that there's some sense of um, security. There's also um, insurance at a high level of membership. So I have 269 to trusted house if it gives me insurance in case somebody cancels at the last minute and will cover a hotel for me. Um, if I have a vet emergency, they have a support line and an ability to get me to, a, you know, to help me with a vet if it's something I need a vet for, or can I just go to the emergency myself, or maybe it's something I can take care of on my own. So some support you can also get from these platforms while you're sitting or in between a sit or if you have a question. So the advantage to these is, is for me, kind of high on the list, and I recommend you go this way. Because the other half of it is actually doing it through Facebook. And if you looked at Facebook, um, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can pull these up while I'm live. We'll see. Let me just see. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this up and share it. Um, hold on a second. Share that screen there. Okay. So um, this is how sitting in Europe, you will find these host a, host a sitter, house sitting Europe, just type in house sitting or pet sitting into Facebook and you will find a multitude of groups that is good and bad. If you start lurking and watching, you will find that there is good, bad, and ugly. So you're living in Washington, DC and you got invited to a sit from a woman in Paris to watch her cat and she lives in a beautiful area of Paris. Maybe she shared some photographs and maybe you decide to take it offline to direct message each other and you get some pictures. And a week before the sit, she cancels the whole thing. And you have already bought your tickets. Uh, maybe you left another house sit. You have no backup. So is one way to do it. And maybe if you're in Paris already and you'd like to find an extra week to stay for free and you could meet them at a cafe for some croissant, that might be a good way to use these Facebook groups. But I would not use them to plan on going overseas or maybe even in the United States. There's, there's nothing but their profile tell you whether they're legit, whether the photographs are legit, whether the stories about their animals are legit. So you could find yourself in a pretty wacky situation. So I highly recommend you go with the online platforms. Facebook groups are free. Online platforms are not. So depend on how you want to invest your money. Okay. So that's my that's my two cents on, on how you can look for a sit and how you set up your profile. So you just want to gather your photographs 
if you've taken care of any pets prior to becoming a house sitter, if you had your own pets, um, travel that you've done, and even your life experience, you know, that shows that you have responsibility. Um, I'm, and next time in October 6th, we'll, we'll talk about what you put in your application and how you set up an interview process and keep track of all of them. Um, I only do sits for a minimum of three or four weeks, and I only do the short ones in between those long ones if I want, or it's a holiday weekend or something, and I don't want to spend high rates on a hotel. So the majority of mine are three or four weeks. So it only says I have 22 sits in my, you know, experience, but they're long sits. And I've been doing it for a long time on other platforms before I got to Trusted House Sitters. So just FYI. Um, so that's just something to think about. The other thing um, that I wanted to tell you about, like I said, it'll take two to four weeks to probably get your whole profile set up, join, get references set up and let them verify you. And then you're ready to go. Um, so I think, you know, those are some tips that I have in terms of getting started. There is the interview process we'll talk about next time and questions you can ask and red flags. Um, and then later on in the series, we'll talk about what happened during the SID and what if something goes wrong. So I'm just going to take a look, um, at the chat here and see if there's any questions. It's really great to see you all here. Thank you so much for joining um northern california so i'm nervous about a pet sitting a pet getting sick under my watch so i'd love to hear your experience about that so yeah you know Beth, um i'm pretty lucky i have a lot of dog experience we rescued sharpay for about 20 years and if there's a dog that has a problem it's a sharpay which is why they're in rescue um they're lovely dogs but they just have all sorts of issues so um illness doesn't really bother me and there's a difference between you know sort of white bile and and catastrophic vomiting. Um, when you sit on trusted house sitters and on other platforms, the host is required to put together a welcome guide and it tells their contact information, Wi-Fi, where the water and the electric cutoff is, and they'll walk you through this when you get there, um, and who the vet is and who their follow-up is. I had um, one vet, um, a lab, um, 14, 15 years old, um, and, you know, they, during the interview, they asked if, you know, his end of life happened while I was sitting for them, would I be okay? And, you know, I said, yes, and I'm kind of a, a humanitarian in that. I don't believe that animals should suffer because that's, that's what we're here for because they can't make that decision or they're just, they're sent, they're giving us vibes, right? And we know. Um, and so they had a whole plan. So if, if it happened while I was there, which it did not, I was to call their daughter who did not live far away. The vet would come to the house. They had a whole plan in place. And when you get into aging animals, you, you need to ask that question. Actually here in California, I showed up um, just to meet her and go through the house because our transition time was short. She had a dog and a cat. And the first thing she says when we walk in, she said, I'll be putting Fredo down before you get here, like the next day. And I said, are you okay? She said, yes, she rescues senior dogs out of shelters. So she knows their lifespan there, right? And she was fine. And she said, I'll start stalking the ASPCA and find another one when I get back from my travels. <laughs> so I think, Teresa, people really know, um, people really know kind of how their animals are and what to do. And, you know, if they get scratched or something, Bassetrassen is your friend. Um, they really, people are very, very, very clear about their animal behaviors walking. Like you have to cross the street if they're an aggressive dog or, you know, they aren't friendly with dogs, you aren't going to the dog park and we're not taking them off leash. So people are pretty clear about that. I hope, I hope that answers your question, Beth. I really, I really haven't had that issue and it's, it's worked out really well, but I am on high alert, you know, for vomiting and diarrhea and um, cats are in the house, so you want to make sure everything's clean. You know, the litter box is clean. They have fresh water and things. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And I've been doing this for a long time. Um, in fact, the one dog, the one cat in the, uh, hat came with a collar. She had this little thing on the top of her head and, um, it was, it was just, she was fine. I just had to put some medicine on it. And then I realized it was actually making it worse. So the, the host and I had a conversation. And I just stopped. I said, I think we just need to go some bass address. She said, fine. You know, so you just do what you have to do. Um, is it hard to get 
get chosen. So this is asking, it's hard to get chosen for the first time when you don't have reviews from other clients. Um, I think that depends. I still would like to say in this day and age, our age trumps a lack of experience because they think that we know and we'll figure stuff out. So I would say no, references do mean a lot. So finding the right people to give you references on your character, on your work experience, how you've interacted with people. Um, I wouldn't go back to babysitting service, but you know, that sort of thing. But I don't think so. And I think, um, like I said, in October, we'll talk about the application and what you put in the application. So your age is gonna put you at the top of the list and then your application, and then they go to the, the pro your profile to see if they wanna interview you. So I, and it's a numbers game. So what I was saying is before I came here, I started in February. Um, I don't even know, I think it's 15 sits I have between June and December in Southern California, Palm Springs and Las Vegas. And three of them have asked me to come back from last year. And the one in Palm Springs in June has asked me to come back and I'll be going back there in October. So that happens too. This, you know that sales thing, it takes 10 calls to make one sale. Okay, I apply to multiple dates at the same time. So June 1st to June 30th, I will find five sits that are really interesting to me and I apply to all of them. Sometimes I reject them, sometimes they reject me, sometimes I have multiple offers. So this is not a one and done. This is setting up a search and then deciding who you wanna to apply to. So I guess it can, but you gotta get started. So you can't, you can't not get started because then you're never gonna sit, a sit, right? So just do it. Um, let's see if there are any other questions. Hi, my, Michelle from Milwaukee. Good to see you. Oh, and you're in lifestyle. Hello, you're in Toronto. That's a great city, and especially this time of year, a lovely place to be, except during the winter, maybe. So um, it, lifestyle, I'm sorry, it shows me um, lifestyle digs. So if you have anything that you want to share, just put it in the chat. Any good tips that you know or that you've learned from? Let's see who else. Um, no other questions. Anything else that anybody wants to know? As I said, um, we'll be doing this uh, uh, for four weeks. And let me put into um, the chat. So this, let me copy this here for you. Hold on a second and show this to you. Screen. Let me share this here. So. I'm going to give you a link to this and you didn't have to take notes today. I'm sorry. I should have told you that because this guide is now going to be available to you. And all you need to do is sign up. So I'm going to put that in there. You use that link and then um, you'll automatically get a download of the um, document for today for part one. So this basically shows you um, all of the links that I was showing you. It will talk you through how to put your profile together. It'll talk about how you're um, deciding which platform to use. So this is the part one guide. And then we'll do part two on October 6th. So keep your calendars there. It'll be on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram live. And then, of course, it'll go to recording later. But I'd love for you guys to download the, the, the guide. This is my first time you guys doing this course and sharing my knowledge in this way. I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had very casually with people about house sitting and, and that sort of thing. And now I've decided to kind of put this all together so I can share it with more people at, at one time instead of just four people around a dinner table. So I would love your feedback on the information you got today. Put it in the chat now if you want, or you can send me a private message. Um, and on the guide, what do you think about that? Um, things missing. I'm hoping there are no typos. I can't tell you how long, how many times I've gone through that. And or, or do you have any questions once you have the guide? My email is there. Feel free to email me. And then um, you can also sign up for October 6th, um, which is the next one. Sundays. People told me Sundays is when they wanted to do it. So I did it on Sundays. But I want to thank you for your time. If you guys don't have any other questions, I know there is a lot of football going on. So I don't want to keep you any longer than possible, but I really want to thank you for coming along and sharing and learning and, and finding out about this wonderful way to travel well less 
If you're not paying for those hotel rooms, imagine how long you could stay somewhere or how far you could go. Um, let me see, Beth. Um, Beth said, um, do you remember, do you recommend that people get started in their local area? You know, that's a really good question. Yes, Beth. In fact, that's how I got started. When I came back from Australia, I stayed with friends in Las Vegas, had a little casita. And we're dear friends and it was fine. And I got in my head because I didn't have a job yet. I was coming back from a job in Australia and I didn't have a job back in the United States. And I thought, you know what? Let me see if I can find some jobs in Las Vegas. And that way I'm I'm less underfoot with my friends. And they were like, oh, you don't have to do that. Don't worry about it. I said, yeah, let me just figure this out. Oh my gosh. I landed a beautiful and beautiful home, two cats. Vegas for, you know, Vegas is like a 20 minute diameter of everything in the lakes. It was beautiful. Well, she ended up being traveling a lot. So I was going back and forth between my friend's house and hers. And she'd go away with her partner for like two weeks at a time. And then it just became like this, you know, she knew she could trust me and it just, it went really, really well. So yes, absolutely. Or, you know, maybe you do a 50 mile radius around your current home. You know, it depends on how, where you live and how far out you have to go and try and try for a weekend. And you'll find weekend sits, you'll find week sits, you'll find three week sits, you'll find two month sits. So I think that's a great question. And absolutely, um, starting off local and maybe short to see how you like it. Um, and as I said, on October 6th, I'll give you how to apply and how to search and how to ask the right questions so you don't find yourself in a, in a questionable situation. I did once, I'll tell you about that next time. Um, but I survived, you know, we all survived. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Yep. Local area. Let's see. Michael, Michelle, uh, what are your thoughts on beginning a sit staying overnight before? Okay. So this is totally up to the host. So if they're leaving at three o'clock in the morning, they want you there the night before. And that is a question. So some hosts, some are new, some are not, but I always verify the dates because they may say October 25th to November 10th. I said, are those the days you're leaving or the days you're returning? And what time would that, that be? <laughs> so, Michelle, you can ask or they can offer. And the really experienced hosts, depending on when they're leaving, will know to include the night before and they'll have a guest room. The ones that only have like one bedroom apartments or condos, not so much, but they will have arranged their time to leave at like four or five or six in the afternoon. So you can go over at 10 or 11, 12 or 2 o'clock. So those are questions, Michelle, you have with, um, with folks. If they don't want you there the night before, but you want to get there, then yeah, it's on you on the hotel room thing. Or you can ask. You can ask. So I've got sits sort of with two or three days in between. And I've arranged, you know, a hotel or there's a resort here in Southern California that I like going to that's not expensive. Um, so it just depends on... I, I figure if I have to pay for a hotel, I'm here from June until November. So October 6th, I will make sure that I have the accounting of how many days I sat and how many days I had to find accommodations. I also have dear friends in Vegas and I have dear friends in Palm Springs and dear friends in San Diego who are always opening their home to me. But I don't want to overstay that welcome either. But I'm, you know, so I'm balancing. But I'll have that for you on October 6th, actually how many sits I did and how many days I had to take care of because it wasn't a lot at all. So if you have one night out of four or five weeks that you're somewhere or one night out of seven days, you know, that's better than eight days or eight nights in a hotel room. Hope that helps, Michelle. Um, anything else, you guys? Okay. Well, have anything else for you except to say have a wonderful week ahead and I will look forward to seeing you on October 